everybody. It's Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. And I came up to Port Canaveral this weekend to get on the Royal Caribbean Independence of the Seas, a ship that I've been on many times pre-COVID for its four nights that it used to do Thursday to Monday. But now it is currently doing, I think this is its last weekend cruise out of Port Canaveral before it heads down to Miami next week. So if you're getting ready to come on the Independence of the Seas, she is my second favorite ship in Royal Caribbean's fleet directly behind the Freedom of the Seas, but they are like almost identical. They are sister ships in the same exact class. So the Independence of the Seas was launched in 2008 and was refurbed. It went through her amplification right before COVID, I think around 2018, 2019. So she's going to feel very new and very similar to Freedom of the Seas. But let me show you why I really like Independence of the Seas. So as always, I'm going to start here on deck three at the lowest level of the ship, and then we're going to work our way up today. So you see they've got Studio B directly in front of us. This on is on deck three aft, and it does not connect to the forward section of the ship. You're going to have the Quest Game Show. You're going to have the ice skaters in there. And you're also going to have Planet Z or Battle for Planet Z, which is what's going on now, which is their um, laser tag. So if you want to sign up for that, I think there's only four people in there. We're at Coco K today. You can certainly do that. You're also going to have one of the newer setups for the Focus Gallery. So I love this because you simply just slide your card into one of these machines. You see the pictures and you are able to get the ones that you want right there on the screen, which is pretty neat. You're also gonna have Park West Art Gallery. So if you're into art, this is a place that you can come and they will gladly accept your money. Just do research on Park West, know what you're buying because this is probably one of the biggest areas where people uh, will have a complaint if they're not familiar with what the process is. There are bathrooms on this floor, but as you can see, they're here beside the elevator. So they're a little bit hidden compared to where they are in other situations or on other floors, I should say. Coming over here to the dining room, show you the hours real quick. They've got their first seating starts at 5.30 and then they go to 6.45. We'll walk in and give you a quick view of the dining room here, the main dining room. I am a big fan of this ship and its main dining room because it is just beautiful to me. It is very elegant. It is very nice. It is three floors. So the bottom floor is on the entire thing, but then you've got balconies of the other dining rooms up above. Plenty of windows and it just looks really, really cool. Especially, I don't know if you can see the way up there is your captain's table up at the top where the round section is. So if you do chef's table or something like that, that's where that could be served for you. So from here, let's head on up. By the way, this is the main uh, My Time Dining floor. So if you are doing My Time Dining, first of all, on a weekend sailing or short sailings, don't do it. Change into one of the regular ones. Take my best advice there, best practice, and switch out of My Time Dining into a regular dining. It'll just, it'll be easier, but you need to go there, make those reservations with the maitre d' that you just saw, and he'll hook you up with a time to come because you still need to book an actual time. We'll come this way. So you've got the fourth floor entrance to the dining room here. One thing I'll go ahead and mention, Royal Caribbean does a really good job about showing you where you are on the ship. So you see the green dot, or green dot, the red dot on the ship there. That is where you're located on deck number four and you can easily figure out where it is you are going or need to go. You're also gonna have outdoor space here. So quickly gonna pop out here. This is where a lot of people will come to walk, to get some exercise. And there's also a smoking section on one side here. You see we are in perfect day Coco K today, but this is a good spot to walk. If you go all the way up to the front, it will take you to the helipad as well. Coming back around. So we are on deck four now again, more maps, which I love. This is the aft section of the ship. So anytime you see food on a ship, know that you're probably in the back section of it. You are not in the forward section. The forward section is where all your entertainment is gonna be. But in the aft, that's where the food is. You've got Boleros over here, which is the Latin bar. I hear the band that is on here is fantastic. This place has been packed like every single night. And if you wanna just hang out, you've got some great seating over there too. Coming into Playmakers, I think here's one of the best kept secrets for good food on the ship. 
It is at an additional cost, but it is good food. The games are complimentary. They've got a little section here that you can sit, eat, and watch your games on good size TVs. And they've got the same setup on the other side, just on the other side of those pool tables you see over there. I say these are free. Actually, you may have to pay for those. Seeing them be beside of the slot machines here, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to pay for that. All right, so this is Casino Royale. I'm gonna cut the video off and bounce back in on the other side. All right, so we are now outside of the casino and we are walking into Schooner Bar. This is also another great place to come hang out. They're gonna have a piano man, piano woman, that will play in the evenings. You'll also have some trivia here as well. There's some seating over there in the left-hand side if you wanna really squirrel away and find a private section. Over here on the left, you're gonna have a Zumi. So if you like sushi or hibachi, this is gonna be the place that you're gonna come for the show. So I'll quickly show you what is in here. If you have a celebration or friends groups that are coming with you, this is a great place to come and be able to celebrate that occasion. Coming a little bit further over, we'll now jump upstairs to the fifth floor. Actually, let me go and show you the theater. While we're here on the fourth floor, let's see if I can get into the theater. So far, so good. As long as they're not practicing to do anything, we'll be really quiet when we walk in there. Looks like they are practicing grease. So I won't talk too much right now. All right, so they were practicing in there, so I didn't talk too much. So the cast that is here for Greece has been on here for a good little while. I think they've been here for nine months. So they are probably heading off in a couple of weeks, if not before. So it looks like what they're doing is installing a new cast. And so what I mean by that is they are, you've got two casts on board right now. You've got the old cast who's still performing for us guests, and you've got the new cast who's been working in the studio, learning their steps, where they need to be from a studio on land. So they have now transferred to the ship where they're actually going to use the actual stage they're gonna be performing in. And so they are getting all their moves down. Coming into the Star Lounge. Actually, before we go into the Star Lounge, you've got your library over here. So I'm gonna peek in here, see if there's anybody in here. Hopefully not. All right, this is also gonna be your business center. Library books. And for the internet here, just know you still have to purchase it in order to log in. But if you have an account and you need a computer for some reason, you can always do that. Coming over to the Star Lounge. So this, this space isn't really used as much as I think it should be probably. They'll do the art auctions in here. You're gonna have some game shows that they do in here, um, like majority rules, finish the lyric, those things, but it is a neat little spot. But they, to me, don't do terribly much. In the evenings, the most popular thing is they'll bring a band in here and this makes turns into a really cool venue. It does have its own bar as well. So this is deck five in the forward section of the ship. Again, we're looking at entertainment, not at food. So that is the forward section. Coming back into the Royal Promenade. This is gonna be where all your shops and stores are. And it's laid out a little bit different here, but you're gonna have your logo store and your um, liquor and cigarette store kind of combined here in the market. You're also gonna have Sorrento's, a place a lot of people love, and that pizza has saved a ton of folks. I hope they have the Caribbean pizza that is always my personal favorite. You've got your freestyle Coca-Cola machines and the options here are endless. If you are getting the refreshment package, that's gonna come with it in addition to any coffee that you're gonna want. Great signage, once again, if you know where you, about where you need to go, that's gonna tell you. And you've got the L and Anchor. This is the British pub here. This is where your magician, not magician, your musician will be performing here on the left. And if you want some good beers, 
um, that are different, you can find more unique international ones in this location. But a really cool hangout spot. You're then gonna have vintages. So if you're also looking for, not beer, if you're looking for unique wines, this is also the one place that I can find my non-alcoholic wine, Frey, free, F-R-E, um, that I like getting on board the ships. It's one of the few places that will have it or even know what I am talking about when I say that I want the non-alcoholic wine. So Laria, if you're looking for beauty products, you can certainly get those here as well. The bags, if you want bags, the collection here is your bag stop shop, one stop bag shop with Christian Dior, Louis Vuitton and Chanel. On the other side, you've got Regalia. So if you're looking for Effie, expensive watches, they're gonna have all that in there. And it looks like they just got a new shipment of stuff that you might wanna check out. You've got Ben and Jerry's ice cream. When they are making the waffle cones in here, like you smell it all throughout this area and it is wonderful. Cafe Promenade, those are my people. That's where I go most of the time. Not drinking alcohol, that's where I go. Uh, to get the most expensive drink that I'm gonna get here, which is a uh, espresso drink of some kind. If you look back there in the corner, you're gonna see the American style. So if you want just normal drip coffee, you can go there to pick that up. Coming over here, I'm gonna show you Sugar Beach real quick. This is the candy store on board the Independence. If you wanna come in and pay for candy, buy the pound or buy one of the massive lollipops, you can do that. You've got this shop. They actually will have some really good sales in here. So I go in there every time that I come on board the cruise and I can sometimes find some really good discounts. When they put things on sale, it is on sale. Next cruise, if you want to book your next cruise and get some of those onboard booking bonuses with onboard credit, you're gonna have short excursions over here. They're not too terribly much for this short cruise. Your guest services team, hello everybody. And coming towards the back, you see they're doing a little bit of work. We are in Coco Cay today. So if you're curious where everybody is, they are off the ship and at the beach. All right, so that is the backside of deck number five. You see that the dining room does continue here as well, um, but we're gonna jump all the way up to deck 11 now, and I'm gonna show you what all is in the Windjammer, the buffet here, in addition to the outdoor spaces. All right, so welcome to deck 11, once again in the aft section of the ship. This is the Windjammer, where you're also gonna find Giovanni's table as well as Chop's Grill. These are the hours of operation, though I know many of you are not coming on a weekend cruise since Independence of the Seas is not gonna be doing weekends after this sailing. Plenty of hand washing stations, so if you're coming on board, make sure that you are washing and cleaning your hands with soap, sanitizing. They're gonna have sanitizer as well if you wanna use that. They're doing some deep cleaning in here today. They've got the big things out, cleaning up. It is currently lunchtime, and you'll find most of the same items that are gonna be over on the island. So it's gonna be barbecue chicken. You're gonna have a little bit of vegetables, some desserts. Looks like a good time with the officers in here as well, coming to grab some food. But when you're here at um, Coca Cay, the food's all the way in the back because there's not that many of us on the ship that are eating here. You see most people, my favorite place to sit is behind that wall over there. Kind of out of the way. Show you some of that food that I was talking about. You've got the rice, some chicken, some sandwiches. Their soup here is actually normally really good. I don't eat it too much, but people consistently talk about how good the soup is. Hamburgers and hot dogs. I eat more desserts than I should. And then you're gonna have some of the Indian offerings over on this side. This section is gonna be your most popular with where everybody is gonna be sitting. So if you want to spread out a little bit, don't head towards the very aft section of the ship. You can certainly um, find a good spot somewhere else. Now the food here is gonna be the exact same on the opposite side when it is open. So for breakfast or lunch on a sea day, they're gonna have both sides open and it is identical food. So what I recommend people do is always head to the back. Do not stop at the very first food option that you come to because it's gonna be repeated once again in the back. And often you'll find they keep the more expensive high dollar food in the back of the ship so that your plate's already full by the time you get there and you're you know, filling up on cheaper items for them to offer you. So don't be fooled. Oops, about to forget. Let's come into Giovanni's table real quick. If you want some Italian food, this is gonna be the spot for you. 
See that it is beautifully decorated on this ship. Nice, light and airy, and it does go into that second room. Looks a little bit like a mirror back there, but it does go all the way back in there. I can't get into chops right now because of the work that they're doing, but I did have breakfast there this morning and it is also traditional chops. It looks very similar to the other chops that you may have seen in other videos. Um, I'll try to link to one here if I remember when we come back. So now heading outside. So on the left-hand side of the ship here, the port side, is going to be your smoking side. On the right-hand side is going to be the no smoking side. So you're going to find, you know, not that much of a difference. I think more people congregate on the left-hand side because of that. But I'm going to do a multi one. See where these guys are? That's where your ice cream is going to be. So ice cream is right there on that corner. But I want to come over here and show you fish and chips. This is a unique offering of Independence of the Seas. I don't know of another ship that has fish and chips. See what they did there with the naming? Um, if it is on another ship, let me know. But this is definitely going to be somewhere you may want to check out. If you like fish and chips, I like fish and chips, though I don't necessarily like fried stuff anymore. But they're going to have clearly fish and chips, chicken fingers, all that good stuff. They also operate as one of the pool bars. Hey, everybody. A little bit different than El Loco Fresh. I think I personally prefer El Loco Fresh on the ships, but you have options. This is gonna be your kids area on Independence of the Seas. You have hot tubs out here as well. Again, we're in Coco Cay, so you're not gonna see that many people in there. Though every time we come to Coco Cay, I feel like there are more people here. You see, they've got one of the life rafts out over there, survival crafts. That's where they've been practicing their drill first thing this morning. So there's three different hot tubs right in this section. They do stay busy. My favorite one is the one there in the middle. And you're going to have a pool bar over there and a table that you can use as well. Chairs in the Pinnacle and Suite section there have cushions, which I really appreciate being a Pinnacle member. I like having my chairs there. Now we're going to come into the Solarium, which is the 18 and up. They just changed that two weeks ago from 16 to 18. This is an 18 and up space. You have two different hot tubs. You're going to have one here on the left and another one on the right hand side. As you can hear, there's no music in here. So this is going to be your quieter, more calm area. The Solarium bar is normally open. Looks like it's closed right now since we're in Coco Cay. And you're always going to have lifeguards. Even when you're in Coco Cay, you're going to have some lifeguards. Good seating over here, though I think I like having additional lounge chairs over here. This seating is good if you know, you're not a lounge chair kind of person. It gives you some options. Coming back inside, I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek of the fitness center. Though I know that that is not everybody's favorite spot to go. Here is the fitness center and the gym. Again, it's gonna be on deck 11 all the way forward, plenty of machines that you can lift with, cardio equipment, and they're going to have personal trainers here as well that you can chat with, see what you need to be doing. They are glad to help you out. Tons of equipment here that you're going to find, lots of machines, two different Smith machines, which is impressive to me, but it is a little bit of a cramped, when you look over here, this is a, a cramped area. But overall, it has plenty of stuff that you're going to be able to use to modify whatever workout you have to say on your routine, even while on a cruise vacation. So we're going to come back out of the fitness center, Vitality Fitness Center and Spa is what it's called. And we're going to head upstairs to the spa section. So the spa is directly above the gym here. It's always interesting when they put the gym above the spa because People are dropping weights up there and being kind of loud and you're directly below trying to have a massage. It does not always work out as well as you think it will. Deck 12 forward. You're gonna have your friendly spa people always willing to help you make an appointment. But this is where you're gonna come for all of their services. You've got nails here on the left, massage rooms in the back. Coming back out, I walk on Let's see, I'll go on this side. I'll go on the starboard side so that I can show you what this looks like. Did not bring my sunglasses. I've got to where I keep forgetting to bring those. 
I do recommend sunglasses when you come on a cruise ship. So you're gonna have an upstairs section here too. So above the spa, you see the stairs here will take you upstairs. That is like an overflow section, I'll call it. It's also where you're gonna find Freedom, not Freedom, wrong ship, Independence Dunes. So you can head over there. You've got an upstairs section here. So if you want absolute direct sun to be as close to the sun as you can, that's where you're gonna head to. If I am watching a movie up here, so especially those movies that they offer in the evening, the seats right there in the middle are fantastic. Make sure you get here a little bit early to check that out, to get the seat that you want that is by a speaker. I've been up here before and have not been able to hear the actual movie that was playing because I wasn't close to a speaker. Because there can be other people talking and things like that. You just want to make sure that you're going to be close to a speaker. We are now walking towards the aft section of the ship. You see that there's a few more floors up here that we're going to very quickly cover. So we're going to go up there. If you want to stay inside, stay cool, but still do some amazing people watching. You can sit in the Viking Crown Lounge, which is the glass that you see right up there. We'll do a tour of it in a second, but that is one of my favorite places to hang out because it's normally quiet. There's not a lot of people up there unless they're doing karaoke or there's a private event going on. Um, there's not too terribly much going on up there and it's easy to just sit, read a book. It's like, not the library, it's like the library with better views, um, especially during the day. Coming back here to the back, this is gonna take us to the sports deck, the living room, as well as the video arcade. And Johnny Rockets, which I don't know why Johnny Rockets is still on cruise ships, to be honest with you. I think they're in a contract they can't get out of. Um, but I don't know many people that are huge Johnny Rockets fans. Um, that's just me personally. I can't tell you the last time I came here and when I do, it's normally just for a milkshake. Like I'm not a huge fan of what they actually serve. I would say go to Playmakers, their food's 10 times better. Coming in here to the arcade, I'll show you what this has. So you've got the living room on this side. This is gonna be for your teenagers. So ages 12 to 17. And then you're gonna have some arcade games in here. If you want to play an arcade game, make sure that you are loading up your card. You can use your set sale pass to put money on it and then you're just gonna use it at the machine to be able to purchase the game that you wanna play. Parents, make sure that you have limits on your children's cards because they don't always understand that value of money um, and how much they're actually charging up. So if you let them go to the arcade without a limit on their account, I, that could end poorly. So you wanna make sure that you do that. The back section of the ship. This is where fuel is. This is also one of the hangout spots for the younger folks. Some good tables over here. Let me spin around. Beautiful views of Coco Cay here. I don't normally see many people back in this section, even on a sea day. There's always gonna be some chairs back here normally, but people don't always do that. If you wanna have beautiful views of Perfect Day Coco Cay, here's where you're gonna come. And you can get some wonderful pictures as well with Coco Cay in the background. As you see, we are here with Mariner of the Sea. So let me turn around and I'm gonna give you what this looks like from here. There's tons of stuff that you can do here and take advantage of. Mariner of the Seas is gonna look and feel a little bit different. They were both updated about the same time, but you'll find that they are slightly different. You've got the guys practicing for the flow rider, but you're gonna have, I don't know what these areas over here on the ride is called, like a jungle gym kind of situation. And you're also gonna have a few different slides that you can choose from. To get on those slides, make sure you're heading to this booth here and you're gonna get a bracelet saying that you have signed the waiver or your parents have consented to you coming onto the slides and the flow rider. So you gotta make sure you've got the right sign off in order to do that. You've also got a sports court here and this is like a multiplex. So it can be many different things. It can be basketball, it can be badminton, not badminton, basketball, it can be um, soccer, um, those kind of sports, but a lot of it fits out here without a problem. The back entrance to the Diamond Lounge, we can walk inside to see it. 
because I wanted to show you all the rock climbing wall here. It is a little bit different than some of the other ships. It's got a different design that if you want a challenge, you'll be able to find that here. And again, you're gonna need to make sure you have the bracelet and signed off correctly in order to um, get onto the rock climbing wall. Coming back into the ship. So we are on deck 13 now. You have a electric door, funny story. This used to be a normal door that you had to pull and open it. But when this ship is under sail and that door opens, there is a huge wind tunnel and vacuum that's created. The door used to slam all the time. And when it slammed, it would break. And I think unfortunately it probably injured a few people at the rate that I saw it um, closing a few times. That would not surprise me at all. All right, coming back up to the Viking and Crown, we're gonna swing over here to the Sweet Lounge first. I don't know why they have wedding flowers here. Some ships do that, I'm not a huge fan. But make sure that you're also looking up. They've got this beautiful chandelier that is 100% completely hidden. This says exit only, so I'll come to this door then. Though I thought that was the entrance on the other side. Put my card in, not working there. Let's try it on this side. Ooh, that about ate my card. So maybe we're not gonna make it in here. I thought this was an automatic door, but apparently I am not able to get in. Maybe they're changing up some of the pinnacle benefits on me already and I didn't know about it. So we'll come through here and show you Viking Crown Lounge. Again, this was the spot I was talking about earlier with great views to look out over the ship. So if you wanted to sit on one of these couches, lots of good spots to mingle, get to know people. But you see that the view is fantastic and all the light that comes up here, if you want good pictures, have that lighting in the background. You're also gonna have a mini stage over here. So you may have um, evening parties up here. You may have, it may be a nightclub, it may be karaoke. They can do a lot of different things up here. It is a pretty versatile area and you're gonna have the olive or twist as your bar. Coming back around to the Crown Lounge. I think this is the first time I've seen it actually call that on the wall. Let's take a look, see if my card works here. And the card is going to work. Coming into the lounge, I come this way just to get the light behind me a little bit. It's actually decorated well. It is in a um, organized in a fashion that you can meet and greet people very easily here. So you're probably gonna wind up sitting close to somebody beside of somebody. I like the blue a lot. It looks like they've reupholstered the chairs and the carpet recently. You're also gonna have your diamond concierge on this side over here um, that is gonna be able to help you out. You can see there are hours here. It's really around when the lounge is open in the morning and then in the afternoon or the evening, I should say. You've got your coffee machine. That is most people's favorite thing about the Diamond Lounge. You're gonna have some cookies over there that I might come back for after lunchtime. And then you're gonna have the outdoor space here. So if you wanted to sit outside, I've seen, I don't normally see a lot of people playing games out there, but I think that right there is prime real estate to be able to play canasta, cards, whatever it is you wanna play. I think that'd be a good spot for it. So I'm gonna swing back in here to the suite lounge because apparently I just couldn't operate the camera and get my card into the socket at the same time to show you this suite lounge. If you were in a grand suite or up, you will have access to this suite lounge and it is beautiful. You see that it is designed a little bit different. It doesn't hold as many people, but it is a beautiful layout. You have um, my favorite personal section is this middle section here. This is where me and my friends traditionally will hang out because we're when we come on a cruise, we're probably 10 to 15 most times and we'll sit here or maybe we'll sit here and just meet some other people that sit with us. But they've got very comfortable chairs over here as well. And you're going to have a concierge. So this person can really make or break your cruise. If you need something, ask them. They cannot um, solve world problems, but they can certainly go above and beyond to be able to help you out. You're then gonna have a coffee machine as well. So you don't have to um, buy a coffee package. You will be able to get a cappuccino, uh, a latte from the machine there. And they'll have, during the day, cookies out over here. And then in the evening, they're gonna have some hors d'oeuvres for you that you can pick up. You're also gonna have a seating section outside, which has nicer seats than what you're gonna find over on the Crown Land side. 
I don't see many people over here, but I do love the big cushions and the chairs. I think that the suite lounge on the ship is very well done. So there you have the walking tour of Independence of the Seas with Royal Caribbean. She is an absolutely beautiful ship, one of my favorites, and has some interesting features on her that you're not going to find on other cruise ships. All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser. Hoping to see you on a Weekend Cruise soon.